Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I'm ready to do my full review and the results of the carry test <laughs> of the Benchmade Tangu. Um, this knife, if you've watched my unboxing or my first impressions slash kickoff of the carry challenge, uh, you'll know is fairly different for me, or even just if you're familiar at all with my tastes <laughs> in knives and the type of knives that I typically carry, you'll see a trend that every other knife that I own and carry has a pocket clip, whereas this one does not. So that has been kind of the, the real carry challenge about this. So I, I want to address in this video how it went with the carry challenge, whether I will see myself carrying this and other clipless knives more frequently um, or not. And I also want to discuss this knife and how it stands on its own as a knife because this was also <laughs> this is also a new knife that I want to review. So this is the Benchmade Tangu. Um, as you can see, it comes with this nice leather slip. I'm going to show that to you now because I'm going to set it down here in just a moment. Anyway, nice black leather slip. Feels good. It makes the knife softer if you toss it into a pocket. Um, a leather slip is a leather slip. <laughs> Let's talk materials on the knife itself, and then uh, then I think I'll talk about how I felt about the carry challenge, or how I've ended up on it, and then I'll talk about my feelings on the knife itself. So, firstly here we have a blade, which is CPM 20CV. 20CV is an excellent steel. I really like 20CV. I'm glad that they used a good steel like that on this knife. Next we have G10 for the handle scales. You'll see there's a layer of black G10 on the top. It's laid on top of some white G10, so we get this kind of crest showing through and you see some white on the edges. Um, so these handle scales themselves are primarily white G10 with a layer of black on top. If you look at the back spacer, it's actually stacked black and white G10, alternating, um, following the same color palette as the uh, as the scales themselves on the what would normally be the clip side, the lock side kind of, um, just plain black on the outside. Again we've got white on the edges, um, all satin hardware, and then it is a liner lock. Lock up on mine is, uh, I would almost consider it fairly late. <laughs> um, I've seen other people say that theirs is early. Um, it doesn't bother me where the lock up is, it's not overextending itself, it's not over traveling onto that interface, but it's certainly not early. Um, I'm not necessarily one to buy into the fad of like super early lockup being necessarily a good thing. Um, I don't know, that's not an argument I want to start here anyways, but that's where the lockup is. So we've got liner lock, G10, 20CV, and uh, this knife, it's relatively small as you can see, especially like dimensionally it's kind of thin this way. Um, it's not super thick this way, although it's thicker than I think I was expecting it to be before getting it in hand. Um, but because these liners aren't milled out and because the blade stock is quite thick, it feels a little bit chunky, kind of substantial. But to some people that might be a positive, and I think especially from the traditional knife realm, I think that that could be a thing. But this is a, uh, yeah, those are the materials we're playing with. So let's talk about how it went for the carry challenge. I carried this every day for the last week, seven days straight. Before that, I had carried it once or twice before I like officially kicked off the challenge. As I mentioned, every knife that I carry up until this one has had a pocket clip on it. My typical style of carry is to have a primary knife in my front right pocket, like I do right now. This is a perfect example of an average primary knife for me. This is the Rec PM2. Size is great for me as a primary. As you can see, this knife is still getting used a lot. Still gotta do my full review on this. That'll be, be shooting that in the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, that's a three and a half inch blade. The the size, the the parameters of that knife, the clip and its orientation are all right for me to carry as a primary. I carry that knife or other knives relatively similar to it as a primary. And then I carry a secondary knife. Uh, for the last couple months, predominantly my secondary knife has been going 
back left pocket clipped in the side that's closest to my hip and I have good experience with that I like carrying a secondary knife there usually that is a smaller knife a knife maybe about this size if this knife had a pocket clip I'd be glad to carry it there it would be a comfortable profile to carry there it would work well from what I can perceive but this knife does not have a pocket clip so a lot of the times when I've carried this it's been a third knife some of the time I've just tossed it in my back left pocket in the slip and it's my secondary knife and it's just sitting at the bottom of my back left pocket um, in the slip it's not very uncomfortable it's nice and smooth and relatively soft even like sitting on it I hardly notice it but it's just genuinely less accessible <laughs> when it's not clipped right where I can grab it and pull it out and use it um, so in the slip it's doable it's fine I can toss this into any of my pockets um, as long as there's space like it can't go in my front right pocket along with my primary because that's where my wallet goes so this can't go next to my wallet really my front left pocket is where my phone goes I'm left-handed for phone calls <laughs> so that works for me um, back right pocket I clip my keys back there and oftentimes I tuck them into that pocket so it doesn't jingle them around as much and then I hesitate to put something nice in that pocket too because then the keys could gouge it up so back left pocket is really kind of the place or fifth pocket if I'm wearing pants that have a fifth pocket and I'm carrying a small enough secondary um, like <laughs> I happen to today have chucked in just for fun the micro fortis which is like a half of a secondary this is a laughably tiny knife but if I'm carrying a knife that's small enough to tuck in that pocket it's an easy spot to tuck a knife this knife I've found I have one pair of shorts where it worked well as a secondary but the fifth pocket on those shorts is actually just like a little bit bigger than most today I'm wearing jeans well they're black pants but they're denim um, and I have this same pair of pants in a number of different colors and my favorite pairs of pants I wear pants like this all the time in this fifth pocket which isn't an abnormally small fifth pocket it's just kind of average for a pair of pants based on my experience this knife is too long to really fit in there um, if it was shorter <laughs> it could work but especially in the leather slip it's a no-go trying to just talk, tuck this in my fifth pocket I feel like it's gonna fall out because it's kind of already sticking out a little bit and it just doesn't work so well so really my only legitimate option for carrying this knife typically has been to put it in the slip and chuck it in my back left pocket now when I do that the problem is then I pull out the whole thing in order to get it out right because in my pocket I'm not gonna like be able to fumble around and get this out of the slip and leave the slip conveniently into the pocket or that doesn't really work so I pull the whole thing out and then I have to two-handed get the knife out of the slip put the slip back in my pocket or set it down somewhere and then I've got the knife and I'm ready to use it for some people part of the allure of a traditional knife might be the process getting it out getting ready to use it to me I don't see that as a positive I like to pull out a knife flick it open and be ready to go I want the knife to be somewhere where I can reach it reliably get it out put it back in um, have maximum dexterity to do whatever I'm working on that I need to pull out a knife in the middle of uh, most of my cutting tasks happen when my hands are kind of full of things and I'm, I'm in the middle of doing something maybe I'm carrying stuff out to the dumpster and I've got to cut some cardboard or whatever it is like last night we had a bunch of boxes I had to take some out I try to process it so that everyone in the apartment building doesn't hate us because <laughs> we're putting unbroken down boxes into the dumpster so the box that I'm holding when I get out there while I'm holding it I pull out my knife start cutting some tape I flatten it out I cut some strips like this was the knife that was on me and it worked great for that if the knife that's on me is like this and it's in a slip inside of my pocket that I have to set down what I'm working on I have to use two hands it's just a bummer that it's it's not a good one-handed system I'm not saying it's trying to be and I'm not saying it has to be I'm saying for me the way I experience this carry challenge I don't prefer it now the way that I can see this knife kind of redeeming itself for me would be as we get into these colder months and as I start wearing jackets this knife would be great to have in like the inner liner pocket of a jacket something like that just loose not in the slip so that I can reach in my jacket pull it out and boom I've got a knife 
that makes sense to me all of a sudden when I've got pockets other than just on my pants. I'm not like a cargo pants kind of guy. Um, I've been thinking about trying to start rocking a fanny pack. Let me know if you think that's a good idea. Uh, but I don't have, uh, the space I have is my jeans or my shorts. <laughs> and this knife, the way it carries in jeans or shorts, I just don't really like it. I just don't. Um, other people have workarounds for that. Like I've seen a number of people recommend the slips that carry multiple pieces of gear. So you'd put like um, a flashlight and this and a Zippo or whatever into one like pocket caddy. Or there's the slips kind of like this one, but the slip itself has a clip on it. So you'd clip this into your pocket and then you've got like this in pocket holster for your knife. Um, I don't want to mess with any of that. It just, it, uh, I'm not drawn towards it. And I feel like if I start adding a clip onto the slip of my clipless knife, then I'm taking too many steps to just have a knife with a clip. Um, there's a reason why knives have clips in this day and age to me. So as a man who lives in modern times and I, I just don't have this inherent draw towards traditional knives, I just don't like carrying this knife traditionally. I'll try it again once I've got, once it's jacket season. I can see that making more sense. Um, this could also be a great carry for like in a suit coat pocket if I'm going to a wedding or a nicer event or something. This is a rather gentlemanly looking knife. Um, I, I think it has an inherent quality about it that's not very intimidating. This would be a good like fancy event knife if I'm literally putting it in a suit coat pocket or something. I like the idea of that. Um, but as for my normal EDC, I don't really see this as like a super viable option. I, I wouldn't be satisfied to put only this knife in my pocket. I just, I, I worry about being able to get to it quickly and, and reliably. And I, I like, even if I'm going somewhere super lightweight and I'm carrying a small knife that would typically be a secondary, I want it to be where I'm used to it being. And I want to be able to get to it and use it but with like muscle memory and this just kind of breaks that cycle for me. So that'll be the result of the carry challenge portion of this video. Um, yeah, let's talk about the knife itself because the Benchmade Tangu is the knife that I picked for this for a reason because I was intrigued about it. Um, I was interested in this knife. I like the aesthetics of it. Um, I like that it's got kind of a cool traditional pattern aesthetically, uh, but it infuses all of the modern materials that you'd want. It's a flipper on bearings. Um, so yeah, let's talk about how this knife has stacked up. We've already talked ingredients, so I guess let's go kind of in order of the things I typically talk about. Ergos, action, um, carry, we've, we've gone over sufficiently, but um, we'll talk about cutting performance and, and then just my impressions. So ergos on this knife are fine. Um, I mentioned this in my first impressions pretty extensively, but there's one big hang-up I have with the Ergos. The handle itself is super neutral. It's a very, very neutral pattern. Come on. Um, and for that reason, it, it's going to be pleasant for virtually anybody to put in hand in terms of the actual handle itself. Now, the issue is this flipper tab. Um, I just don't... The, the more I've thought about it, the more it's bothered me. <laughs> I don't understand the geometry of why this flipper tab is positioned in such a way on the knife that it tilts into the path of the handle so much. If this flipper tab ended up here, like even forward facing instead of backward facing into the handle, this knife would be so much more comfortable to hold on to. I'm not sure why they've sacrificed handle space for this flipper tab. I would rather have this knife be like on thumb studs or something and not have that flipper tab at all because this handle would be excellent. If it was just a flat profile all the way up, I would really appreciate having all of this space up here to put my hand on. It would make this knife so much better in my opinion. They could have made it a front flipper. Front flipper traditional pattern knives are kind of in right now. So maybe that's why they didn't is they didn't want to seem like they're adding another one to that space, but I just feel like it was, this is my opinion. 
I feel like it was a bad design call to make this knife a flipper with a tab that sticks out in that spot when the knife is open. It's just not a good spot for that flipper tab to go. It's an uncomfortable spot that rests against my pointer finger when I'm on the knife. I'm still, I'm barely getting four fingers on this knife. And if that flipper tab wasn't there, I'd have like breathing room. It would feel nice. It's just, there's not really a forward finger choil, so I can't really go in front of it comfortably. I wouldn't recommend doing that based on how this knife is set up. It just, it doesn't quite seem right to me that the flipper tab is there. And the more time I've spent holding this knife, using this knife, cutting with this knife, that's my biggest gripe with the design of the knife is that this flipper tab is right where my finger wants to be. And I don't feel like it should be. Even if they just changed the placement of it so that it landed more appropriately, gave me more of that handle, I, yeah, it doesn't quite make sense to me why they did that. Um, yeah, otherwise ergonomically, everything is smooth. Everything is pleasant to hold on to. This G10 feels great. Um, the shape of the handle is pleasant. There's no clip, which makes it even more comfortable in hand. It can't possibly make a hot spot or anything if it's not there. It's just uh, otherwise very pleasant to hold on to. But that flipper tab, gosh, it bugs me. Um, <laughs> let's talk about action. So the action on this knife is good. Um, the detent on mine happens to be dialed very, very well. Um, I've heard other people say that theirs was either too soft or too hard. I can't make any judgment on that because I haven't held those other people's knives. The one that I have, the detent fires reliably. It's a, an excellent kind of weight of how much force I need to build to, to break that detent and, and deploy the knife. It just it feels very, very good. It's an intuitive action to play with. Um, I like to open this knife kind of light switch style on the flipper tab. Um, it does also work push button. Um, but yeah, as flippers go, it deploys very reliably. You can tell that it's on bearings as you use it. It's just got that smoothness to it. Although mine is not exactly drop shutty. And usually on a blade this kind of thin this way, I'd be like, well, of course it's not. That's a tiny little blade. But this is a pretty thick blade. So I may end up playing with the action on this, adding some KPL and doing a little adjustment, fine tuning, seeing if I can get it a little more drop shutty. That said, it's not like I'm having to push it the whole way along and force it shut. It's not like that, but I, I, I think I would appreciate it if it was a little bit more free falling. Um, but yeah, it locks up solid. The action works fine. Obviously it's just the one deployment method. It's the flipper tab and that's it. Um, like I said, this I think would be a great host for a front flipper, or even if they extended this tang out just enough to give me a thumb stud or something, I would be fine with that. I, I, I could get rid of this flipper tab altogether, give me virtually any other method to open the knife, and I would appreciate that I now have a more usable handle. But as flipper tabs go for fidgeting with, this one's fine. It's fun. Um, it's a, a good knife on bearings. So there you have that. Um, let's talk about cutting performance. Now, the edge that came on this knife is good. Uh, Benchmade does good factory edges from all of the recent knives that I've had. Um, they're, they're doing well at sharpening in factory, and this one's no different. It's got a good edge on it. Um, as you can see, the profile of this edge is a little different because this Tanto, obviously the tip, gets real thick, and so the bevel, like the actual edge bevel itself, looks pretty wild up there, but it's a nice, fairly short bevel down here, um, and the edge itself is good. My hang up with this knife, cutting wise, is that they used a really, really thick blade stock for the size of this knife, and for, in my opinion, what this knife is designed to be able to do capability wise. This blade stock would be an appropriate thickness on like a bushcrafting knife. I'm not quite sure how they got here <coughs> on like a gentleman's modern traditional. <laughs> it just doesn't add up to me. It doesn't compute in my brain why this blade stock thickness was the choice other than I think a lot of people think it's kind of cool and fun to have a thick blade. It feels more robust and it feels more capable. It makes this knife, however, I would argue less capable for the things it's actually designed to be able to do. 
a knife in this scope of design, in my opinion, is designed to handle pretty typical EDC tasks. I don't think they designed this knife to go and cut down brush and start fires and uh, handle really hard material. I don't think this is going to be an electrician's knife or someone who works in construction. This knife doesn't seem designed to fit within that arena to me. Maybe I'm being too critical, but it really doesn't. Um, so why such a thick blade stock? It seems completely unnecessary and it hampers the cutting performance of this blade. The cutting tasks I've done with it, and I've made a point to do quite a few, I've done all of my typical stuff, cardboard, opening packages, slicing paper to see how the edge itself does. Um, I've cut some paracord with it to see how it did. I cut some thicker rope with it to see how it did. I have, um, what else? I've done some zip ties, done typical like uh, odds and ends within packaging, opening stuff. And I just feel like this blade, if they want if they're gung ho about this thickness, because it makes the action better or makes it look better when the knife is closed, that it's a nice thick blade in there or something. If it was an aesthetic or a, a fidgety choice, okay. Why then is it just aesthetics as well that it's ground like this? I mean, if they had at least done a full flat, we could probably be a little better. Or if they had kept this flat up here and the wedge and all that and done a hollow grind, then we could at least remove some more of that material, get thinner right behind the edge. I just, I feel like this blade stock could literally be half as thick as it is and it would make the knife better. <laughs> it, it would make the knife function better for the types of things that I imagine anyone who's taking a, a real <laughs> estimation of what they're going to do with this knife is actually going to do with it. I don't know. It, it just doesn't doesn't quite add up to me. And I know sometimes I can be a little critical of Benchmade. Obviously this is a collaboration between Benchmade and Jared Osier. Um, so this isn't a Benchmade in-house design. But I just feel, I feel particularly confused about this one. Because there are some things I like about it. I like the material selection for the type of knife it is. I like the finishing on it. I like the aesthetics of it. I think it looks very cool. I just, in application, I feel like it's kind of fallen apart for me. I'm not quite sure why they made several of the choices that they made. So not every knife has to be for me. That's the reality. If I were altering this knife to be for me, like say I was going to mod this knife to make it work, I would do a regrind first and foremost. And then I would add a clip somehow. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'd have to figure out a way for this to be a viable like EDC knife option for me. But even imagine I'm still, I'm just going to keep this as a, a piece I'm going to carry relatively rarely, but in like a suit coat pocket or in a jacket pocket or something like that. I would still need to regrind it. And I, I don't see a way to get rid of this flipper tab, but that's the other big problem. And so, I don't know, maybe some people will get this and this flipper tab won't bother them. And then it's just like kind of thick behind the edge, but a lot of knives are thick behind the edge these days. This isn't the only knife that's ground too thick in my opinion. It's just ground way too thick for the type of knife it is especially. It's one thing if it's like a big, hefty, outdoorsy knife and it's like, yeah, we ground it thick because it's gotta be tough. I can see the argument and the mentality there, but on a little dainty gentleman's like coat pocket folder, why? Why so thick? And why put the flipper tab in your, like, just right in the handle where it's the most annoying spot possible? I just, it doesn't make sense to me. So I guess that's kind of my, <laughs> my final thoughts on it. Um, I still like the things about this knife that I like about it. I like the way it looks. I, I enjoy the action. But in real application, as a knife, I don't know who... Like, sometimes it's easy for me to put it in the parameters of like, is there a situation where I would recommend this knife to somebody? If somebody was looking for a kind of traditional pattern knife or modern traditional 
Um, I'm not super versed on the subject, to be honest. This is, like, as evidenced by my carry challenge, it's the first real one I'm giving a shot to. But if someone was like, I need something fancy to put in my suit coat pocket, I'd probably just recommend a knife that has a clip and can still go in your suit coat pocket and, and doesn't have the, the issues that I have with this. I don't know. I feel like... Uh, I don't like back locks or slip joints, typically speaking. But I would rather have a slip joint version of this that didn't have that flipper tab in my way. And a, a, a flipper on bearings is so much better, in my mind, than a slip joint, personally. My preference is absolutely flipper on bearings compared to slip joint. But this knife would be better suited, I think, <laughs> to, to be the archaic lock type and be less modern and not have that flipper tab that's frankly very annoying to me. I don't know, it's a weird thing. So I guess that'll kind of be that. Um, I don't necessarily think this will be a knife that I'll be recommending to people. Um, but I also can't tell everyone how to spend their money. I'm not even going to try to or pretend that people should blindly follow what I prefer. Um, if this is a knife that speaks to you, then it's well made. It functions. Um, and I mean, there, there, there are certainly positives to it. I just don't think the positives outweigh my personal negatives that I've gotten out of it. But I know several people who have this knife and really enjoy it. Um, so I guess there's that. <laughs> That'll be my full review on the Benchmade Tengu and the results of my carry challenge. Um, both of which, not very good. <laughs> but I'm glad that I did another carry challenge. I found out another thing that I could come to a conclusion on based on actual experience not based on just hypotheticals in my mind. So um, I'm sure it won't be long until I do another carry challenge of some sort. We'll see what the next one will be. But uh, thank you so much for watching. If you guys made it to the end of this one, little spoiler alert, the next time you see me on video, I'll have way less hair and less of a beard. I have to trim my beard for work because work is starting back up. So breathe it in, drink it in. I don't know. <laughs> Enjoy it. This will probably be the last you'll see of my beard this big for a while. And my hair this big for a while. Anyway, <laughs> thanks guys. Appreciate you watching as always. And I will see you on the next one.